All right. Uh, there's a motion and a, and a second to adopt the substitute second. to 988. All those in favor say aye. 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 All right. The substitutes before us. By the way, Mr. Chairman, it was it was moved by the recommend by the committee to to report four to one. Okay. Mr. Chairman. Uh, Senator Norman. I'd asked uh, Senator Spruill, did the did the subcommittee consider this substitute that's before us? No, sir. That's being passed out now, I believe. No, sir, we did not. What we did basically not is the difference between that and the original? No, we well, did not. Well, my question is, whose bill is this? Senator uh, Lucas. You, you, the substitute, you. Yes, it is. Yes. <laughs> Since it looks you need to go down there, you need to go down there. You want to go and explain what we're doing? Well, here? if you don't mind if I do it from here. Sure, the, absolutely. He looks like a, he reads out a sentence, I don't think he looks like one. Okay. Yeah. Um, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, the substitute uh, in essence says that this is to promote the development and proliferation of electric school buses in the Commonwealth and also uh, to make sure that the rate adjustment clause to recover the cost of one or more electric school buses projects pursuant to this division. Um, the savings will go to the locality. And of course, the purchase of these buses will be owned or managed by um, by the school district and the, and the electric company. But it also indicates that no electric company will be uh, permitted to transport students on these buses. Yes. Uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Senator Newman. Uh, maybe you, you, or either one of you, but the delta between what the bus costs, which I understand is 100000 and the electric bus, which I'm being told is 300000 who is going to pay for that cost? Yeah, Mr. Chairman, Chris Nolan with McGuire Woods on behalf of Dominion Energy um, and spoke at the subcommittee as well. Mr. Chairman, the delta is basically the cost of the battery in the bus, and that will be uh, a cost that the ratepayers will pay for ultimately because this is a grid resource. And the reason is that these buses will be hooked up to the grid at night for charging purposes to fuel them, but when they're not being used for that purpose, they are a grid resource to stabilize the grid or to reduce uh, peak demand okay. at that time. Thank you for your so help. that's the benefit to the ratepayer is that really stabilization oh, piece. Uh, Mr. Chairman, one more question, I guess. Is, uh, this, is this deemed to be in the public interest and required to be done? Correct, uh, okay. Mr. Chairman. The bill does declare this to be in the public interest. The difference between the substitute and the bill in the subcommittee, though, is that it removed the language that the costs were uh, deemed to be reasonably and prudently incurred. Mm -hmm. So, and that okay. was at the after the SEC and the AG's office. Senator, um, Mr. Chair. Um, and then Senator Deeds. Mr. Chairman, my, my question would be, and you, you hit the magic phrase, uh, how is the increased cost being distributed over the ratepayers' base worthy of a declaration in the statute that it's in the public interest? Mr. Chairman, how was the process for which the cost is recovered? Mr. Chairman, excuse me. Sir. What justifies putting the affirmative statement in the bill that it's in the public interest? Well, Mr. Chairman, the, the purpose of the bill is to remove the hurdle for these school districts as they replace buses. Not, it's not a mandate to go out and buy a new electric bus, but as they replace the buses that are scheduled to, to come due for replacement, this removes the hurdle for them to go to an electric bus. Mr. Chairman, that's going to cost more. To the school district, the cost is going to be the same because they would have otherwise spent $100,000 for a diesel bus. Mr. Chairman, I understand that. Who's, who's picking up the cost of the batteries, which is an extraordinary expense? Mr. Chairman, that is um, the rate payer because this is a resource being used for the grid. All right. Yeah, Mr. Chair. Uh, Senator Deeds. What, 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 when you were first talking, Mr. Nolan, you, you talked about something about these buses stabilizing the grid. So, what, Mr. Chairman, if I may, what can happen is at night or uh, during the summer when the buses are plugged into the grid, it's called vehicle to grid technology. If, the, uh, if there's fluctuations on the grid or we're reaching peak demand, these buses, the batteries, can be called upon to inject power that is stored in those batteries onto the grid. That's one of the reasons why we have for renewables, part of the problem with renewables is you cannot store the energy. This is the ability to do that and then to use it in other settings, for instance, summer, nighttime, whenever, 
to bring that energy back onto the grid after it's been stored. Let me ask you a question myself. Are there, are there going to be solar panels on the top of the buses? No, sir. You, you might think about that in the future, really. Uh, Mr. Chairman, all right. Just Any one other question, Senator Newman. One more question. What about the infrastructure, the GSU, the generation step-up transformers, and all those that'll be needed to cook them into the grid? Is that going to be also part of the recoverable fee, so that at the school you'll actually have a GSU jumping up the power to the grid power, and that'll all be covered by the that's the associated infrastructure, Mr. Chairman, and that would be part of the the cost with the battery. Mr. Chairman. Uh, Senator Bell. Uh, I don't know if you can answer this or be better for somebody else, but I would also assume I've got an electric vehicle. Uh, you wouldn't have oil changes and other maintenance requirements, electric vehicles, so there would be savings um, in other ways. Is that correct? Mr. Chairman, uh, yes, and the bill also provides that those savings inure to the benefit of the locality, mm -hmm. and they get to retain those savings, and it's estimated to be somewhere around seven to eight thousand dollars a year that the localities per bus will save in maintenance costs and fuel Mr. costs. Mr. Chairman, um, to, in response to Senator Bell, you can find that language on lines 36 through 42. 43. Right. Mr. Chair, uh, Senator May, maybe I could add just a question to staff. I understand there's a House bill. Does the substitute get us closer to the language in the House bill? Mr. Chairman, Senator Dietz, um, I, I believe the House bill, uh, while going after the same thing, is the language is significantly different. Okay, thank you. Mr. Chairman. Okay, uh, Senator Cervell. Uh, I don't know if this is for Mr. Nolan or staff or somebody, on. but is there any kind of cap on this program, or is it just we're going to be buying electric school buses in perpetuity and ratepayers going to be picking it up forever? Yep, Mr. Chairman, uh, I can answer that. So there are uh, two caps. One is 40% uh, of the buses in the service area. That's the maximum that can be replaced, and that's estimated to be 300, 300 buses a year for five years. There's a sunset on this at 2025. So at most, it would be 1,500 buses during the course of the program. M Mr. Chairman, again, to respond to Senator Serval, you can find that language on lines 44 through line 48 where it specifically says any such utility implementing an electric bus, school bus project shall limit participation in such project to a maximum of 40% in the aggregate. Mr. Chairman, thank you. Okay. Um, anyone else want to speak in favor? Okay. Uh, Senator Evan. Yes. Um, when you talk about stabilizing the grid or having that uh, energy stored in case there should be a need for um, additional power, uh, or how much, if you were talking about a blackout or something, how many, is this enough, how strong is it in terms of how many homes could this avoid blacking out if there is such an equivalent? Senator Dan Weekly with Dominion. So when you think about it, the batteries are 220 kilowatt hours each per bus. So if you do the math on that, when we get to 2025, we will have about 330 megawatts of capacity out there. Um, we would be able to draw that energy back on the, on the, onto the grid. Theoretically, what we're hoping to get to is a point where hot summer months, peak evenings, where we won't have to start a power station. We can draw the, the energy out of those buses. <coughs> That's about enough energy for about 15,000 residential homes. Thank you. All right. Uh, anyone in opposition? All right, bills before us. Move the report. Second. All right, it's been moved and seconded that Senate Bill 988 be reported. All those in favor, vote aye. Opposed, nay. As 11, no's 4. <laughs>